So if you're going to use Photoshop for video purposes, you're going to go ahead and need to get it set up right. There are several preferences that you're going to need to change in order to make Photoshop a little more video friendly. To get things started, you can go ahead up to the Photoshop menu on a Mac and choose Preferences General. On a PC, you'll find this command under the File menu. The shortcut for this, though, is Command-K on a Mac or Control-K on a PC. Let's go ahead and call up the general preferences. There's going to be several things to change here, so you may want to take notes or, of course, just simply take a look inside of Chapter 1 where we go over how to set up Photoshop. First off, we have the color picker, and you could specify to use the Adobe color picker or use the system picker. On a Mac, you'll have an Apple picker or on a Windows machine, you'll have the standard Windows color dialog box. I always recommend going with the Adobe Picker so it's consistent throughout applications. Next, you want to choose how image interpolation is performed. This is when you scale or resize an image. Normally, you're going to want to choose by cubic better. You can, of course, always specify which method to use when using the image size command, but this is the approach that will be used by the free transform command. In Photoshop CS, we added two new methods by cubic smoother and by cubic sharper. These will produce better results trying to maintain a smoother image or a sharper image. I generally stick with the default method though of by cubic better. Next you have your history states. Think of this as how many multiple undos you have. Photoshop is configured to have 20. If you're newer to Photoshop or you like to experiment more, you might want to set this to a higher number. Just keep in mind though, the larger the number of history states, the more your RAM is eaten up to preserve undos. There are a few other options here that you might want to consider. If you want the clipboard to export to other applications, leave it checked. I usually leave the Show Tooltips box on, so when I roll over an item, I get a handy tip, usually telling me the keyboard shortcut or more information about a command. The Zoom Resizes Windows command is optional. This just means that the window gets bigger as you scale in. Our next column has a few more options. Dynamic color sliders give you quicker feedback. And I usually choose to save the palette locations. This way when I restart Photoshop, it looks like how I last left it. If you'd like to see the font names in English instead of special characters, that can be helpful. Those of you who are old-timers in Photoshop might remember when you could cycle through tools by just pressing the letter. For example, pressing the letter M would cycle between your elliptical and rectangular marquee tools. Later, Photoshop required you to hold down the Shift key plus the letter to cycle tools. Well, this is now an option. If you'd like an easier time to switch tools, disable the Use Shift key for Tool Switch checkbox. Finally, you have Use Smart Quotes. Smart Quotes are true quote marks that should be used for quotations or for apostrophes. However, be careful if you're trying to mark out feet and inches, as apostrophes and quote marks will be substituted for these marks. If you're doing a lot of work for forensics or legal purposes, you might want to turn on the history log. This will save information about every step that was applied to an image. This is really only useful for documentation purposes or if you're needing to do training. The new history log feature is clearly detailed in the online help for Photoshop and you can take a look at it there. I'm going to go ahead and turn the history log off since I don't usually use it and I'll click next. Our next choice here is for file handling. I choose to always save image previews. This makes it easier to find a file when browsing at the finder level. I usually choose to save a custom icon as well as thumbnails. I do not usually save full-size previews as these are more for print purposes. If you do a lot of web work, you may not want to change this option. However, for video, you might find that the icons and the thumbnails come in handy. Next, you always want to append the file extension. This is the two or three letter code that goes at the end of a file and lets the computer know what to do with it. In the old days, you used to be able to get away without using file extensions 
if you ran on the Mac platform. That's because most of the data information was stored in the header of the file. Now, especially as you move files across networks and the internet, you have to always use file extensions. Computers are dumb. If you just give it a graphic file without an extension, it's going to try to open it up in simple text or notepad, and you'll just get pages and pages of code. Always append your file extensions. We have a few more options on this page that you may want to adjust. I usually will go ahead and always maximize PSD file compatibility. This way, if I have to share Photoshop files with folks using older versions of Photoshop, it's going to be more likely that they can open the file up with fewer problems. When set, go ahead and click the Next button. On this page, there are a few important things to change. In the Display area, leave all of these boxes unchecked. When viewing channels, you want to see them as grayscale files. This is for the same reason that most cameras use a grayscale viewfinder, because it's a lot easier to judge contrast and problems with the image. Don't use diffusion dither or pixel doubling, as these will give you a lower quality image on screen. For painting cursors, I find it a lot more accurate to use the brush size. This way, as you change the size and shape of the brush, the cursor will adjust on screen. This makes it a lot easier to know where that paint stroke is going to go. In the other cursors area, I don't like using the standard cursors. If I pick the eyedropper tool, I know I picked the eyedropper tool. Instead, I would rather see a precise icon. That's going to give me a target sample, so I have a very good idea where I'm clicking.